Don't let your physical conditioning limit what's optimal in your game. That involves everything. If you're a stretch, if you're Gumby, you know what the difference between Gumby is and the difference between Kevin is? Gumby is going to be able to hit angles a lot more effectively. And that means he doesn't have to use as much energy. Okay? I don't have to shrimp almost ever. Because if he, someone gets, first off, I expend the energy early on to not be out of position. Okay? So here's an example. All right? He's coming in. We're going to do the lazy route. He grabs my ankles. All right? Why am I letting him do this? So what's going to happen next? Throw my legs to the side. Well, I got to fucking move. I not only risked, you know, back exposure and a pass by letting him have that little tiny control point that took nothing on my part to proactively prevent, okay? But the thing is too, it's like, when you're, this is also about flexibility here. If I'm not flexible and he does that, just pause here, come a little closer. Okay, right about here, okay? Here, this is most people, see what I mean? So now what do I have to do? See the difference, all right? Now, go back to the same spot. I'm here, I've framed. Now I got a shield in. He's not passing me anymore. You see what I mean? You see how just actually putting a little emphasis on my flexibility by stretching already has saved me a fuckload of energy, right? I don't have to move my core if I can just bring my foot in. So, and that involves things like arm bars. The guy that's not flexible is just coming to close guard. The guy that's not flexible has to move their whole fucking body just to get their knee over their head, all right? Goddamn gummies over here just fucking kicking it over. And it works. It literally works. It's just, it, it's effective. So, stretch. Do some cardio. Do physical conditioning. Improve your technique. Prime your reflexes. Okay? And then energy expenditure early on versus later. Earlier has bigger impacts on the match. Okay? Defensively and offensively. If I'm here and he's coming in to grab my ankles, same scenario. Just start to clear shit. Don't let him have free control points. This, every, every situation and every scenario you've ever been in had something like this you could have done. Prevention, and sometimes the prevention is beat their ass, okay? Why am I even on my back? Fuck this, fuck him. You know how much energy you have to use when I'm in mount? Not much, <laughs> zero. Um, but that's actually not true about mount. People play mount incorrectly because this is another example of active energy expenditure versus not. This is a normal mount. This is Timmy's, not Timmy, Timmy's small. Who's, this is Bird's mount. <laughs> okay, the guy who knows what to do, but he's not doing it. Hey. All right? <laughs> Don't fucking lie to yourself. So, we're here, you know, hands on the mat, maybe a little pressure on him. My knees are fucking not doing anything. And if I was grapevining him, just hooking his feet here, they're just hooking their feet. They're doing nothing else. All right? You know what I should be doing here? You ready? You can sit. Okay, I should be pressuring in hard. Okay, and pressuring and climbing and taking everything along the way. The only reason you're not is if you genuinely don't know what to be doing, you can troubleshoot and easily figure it out or ask someone or look it up, okay? Or maybe you're scared of burning out, practice this stuff. And you know, drilling hard like this improves your conditioning there specifically, okay? I talk about how you can't get all your conditioning from rolling because rolling live at the rate you need to get actual cardio and physical conditioning is a guaranteed injury on a long enough time scale. And the time that you will lose of quality training to that injury does not at all compute with you could have just done something else safer for the cardio. Does that make sense? Okay, that's the argument against 100% sparring for conditioning. It doesn't make sense on paper at all. What's your, what do you do for cardio and flexibility? I have a stretching routine that I made up myself. It's not complicated at all to do. You can look at every situation. Okay, I need, I need hip flexibility. I need to be able to take my hips and kick them up and over and at wide angles. So I need to make sure my hip flexibility is good. Okay, and that applies from there even. You need to make sure your hamstrings are really loose because that limits your ability to retract in armbar scenarios or flower sweep scenarios or kicking back up to regard chasing the arm from the back, all of them, all the way connected down here. Next you have up here, you know what I mean? So how do we improve that? Well, there's a lot of different stretching options that you can just figure out. 
you see what I mean? Do you load bearing stretching? Um, I do not. Um, I don't know quite enough about it. Okay. And the thing about physical conditioning is there, you know, there's a, you, you have a lot of different, it, it's like valleys and mountains, okay? And I'm, 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 t I'm taking this from Sam Harris's uh, The Moral Landscape because it just makes sense everywhere. But it's a way that you can conceptualize this. There's a lot of different ways to get to the peak of a mountain. You know, some mountains will go higher. Sometimes the route's easier. That's just using more effective methods of conditioning. Okay? But you're, you're, everyone else is starting at the, in the valley and doing nothing. You can come up with something. As long as the rate of injury is not going to be high, it's going to be better than nothing. Okay? So stretching-wise, there's active stretching, passive stretching, yoga, load-bearing stretching. I, I recommend away from partner stretching because it's inherently dangerous because you need active feedback. Okay? But stretching-wise, you just don't want to stretch cold. If you just have one thing in mind, you know, you need to stretch for 30 plus seconds, between 30 and a minute, okay? Because you have what's called a Golgi reflex, which is the thing that stops you from ripping all of your shit off when you trip, okay? If I tripped over Gumby, I catch myself, everything locked up, because if I didn't, there was a chance it was loose and I tear everything. Tendons and ligaments are more important than muscles. Muscles heal well, kind of. But ligaments don't, tendons really don't, and they break easily. Anyone that does heel hooks will tell you that, okay? So you're not supposed to ever stretch cold because you don't have enough blood flow in the area, okay? Your first 20 seconds, 15 seconds on a stretch, you just go to where it hurts. Okay? And you do this when you're warm. And I mean, I only do this when I'm like sweating hard, breathing hard, there's genuine blood flow. Okay, go to where it hurts, stop. In through your nose, genuine. This sounds like bullshit. You know, yoga makes people just be turned off because there's a lot of suicide rapey bullshit in yoga. Well, Google it, <laughs> okay? Um, but it's not, it's actual science, okay? You're in through your nose, deep breath, out through your mouth. And long extended breathing, you'll notice that reflex chills the fuck out. You're putting it to sleep. You're actually getting now a little bit further. You haven't even hit your flexibility limit yet. You just, you, your body felt you go forward, and hit it, and it stopped you, okay? I go a little forward now, I go to where it hurts again. You're maybe so just a little tiny bit past it. <sighs> Stop. See what I mean? And I use body weight to pull myself forward in a lot of positions, naturally, slowly, okay? And I stretch twice in one session, all right? So whole routine, whatever that routine is, once through, twice through. At least. You can do three, but there's a point where you are overstretching. And if you stretch cold, you've absolutely instantly overstretched. You've, you've hurt yourself. You cause micro tears that swell. And swelling is the enemy of flexibility. You know what I mean? You actually just, good job, motherfucker. Your grandpa stretches lost you flexibility. All right? So that's why I rant about people flexing or stretching the cold. Because everyone did that in 1940 gym class. And because nobody ever takes the time to learn and update their information based on science, they teach that. And it just is bad information getting passed down. All right? So you see how this is just easy. And if you, I do it twice a day after each one of my sessions. And when I'm the warmest, sometimes my drilling wasn't enough to warm me up. I'm doing something that's not doing anything blood flow wise down here. So then I have to do it after my cardio. Okay? And then if you can at least get once a day, you're doing more. You're doing better. But if you do twice a day and you have a solid routine, within a month you'll notice. With me, two weeks and I gain 30% skill level in jiu-jitsu. Literally, genuinely. In terms of how much energy I'm using, the ridiculous bullshit I start pulling off. And I'm aware of how fucked up it looks when I'm doing it, by the way. You ever see me laugh? It's like, I know that was wrong. <laughs> okay? But it's just like optimal jiu-jitsu based on actual trying to improve everywhere. Anyone can do that. It's not special. And then back to the drilling now. Did that make sense for everyone flexibility-wise? For my cardio, there's, like I said, there's a ton of different ways to do cardio. You can do X passes as hard as you fucking can for 10 minutes, and you have done a cardio workout. Okay, Muscular endurance, squeezing, isometric squeezes. I, sque I used to squeeze Bert, and then I broke his ribs, so then I squeeze uh, Bob dummies, because you get to the point where you can hurt people. And it actually takes much less time than people realize. Stay away from me. <laughs> and it's just because people don't actively focus on this. People show up to class, and they think, I need to roll. I want to improve at jiu-jitsu, but jiu-jitsu to them is just this nebulous idea. Okay, it's, it's, it's all lumped into this vague, wishy-washy bullshit, all right? If I took a, a couple days and I genuinely made an improvement on my knee slice, I have gotten better at jiu-jitsu. Or I got better at closed guard arm bars. 
I've gotten better at jiu-jitsu. You improve the most effectively in isolation, and then you combine the mechanics, okay? And that applies everywhere, okay? Um, for, so for cardio, I go outside and I do sprints. I do hill sprints. I asked a guy who lived in the Olympic Village for 23 years or 27 years for wrestling. His name is Bobby Demerit. I said, what do you what do? You do? I, I picked his brain on literally everything, not just wrestling, okay? But he, uh, definitely a lot of wrestling, you know? And I went from like being scared to shoot to now people actually think I wrestled in college, which is just insane. I, I, I dropped out of college and didn't have a wrestling team and all that. But I didn't wrestle. I didn't learn how to shoot until I was a purple belt. I'm, I'm being serious. So it's not too late. You just have to practice it. The thing that people don't do, the step they don't do, they learn how to do a double leg, but they don't practice it. They don't practice it correctly. You know what I mean? They try to just go double leg people in, in wrestling practice when they're just going live and just doing takedowns, which is stupid. And they get a guillotine and they get gunshot. You know? You see, that's just, and then no one shoots in jiu-jitsu anymore. And that's honestly why I think why. They never learn correctly. They never practice correctly. And they're terrified. Because the punishment failure is, is, is kind of high. But it's not that risky if you do it right. And there's ways to recover. All right? So, but that comes down to training methodology, which comes down to drilling, which I'm going to get back to. But we started with physical conditioning. All right? It's just like sprints I do because that guy told me to. And he knows so much about effective training because the only thing they do at the Olympic Training Center is research how to get better the fastest. And we're not doing anything different than they are. Nothing. It is grappling. Jiu-Jitsu can be argued to be mechanically more complex and positionally more complex. We have more positions. There's more threat models and all of that. Um, it's still motherfucking grappling, though. That's why wrestlers just walk in a room and, you know, fuck up all the black belts in there a little bit, unless they're, like, athletically good black belts. Wrestlers train like athletes, and they train effectively. Not always. There's a lot of bad wrestling, and a lot of people that people think are good wrestlers aren't. Okay, like your, your local college wrestler is the toughest guy takes everyone down. To me, he might look like a joke, and I might just blast double him. And I, I think that, like, if I'm blast doubling you, and I never wrestled a day in my life at a real college, something is wrong with what you're doing. And that's not fair or true. But it's just that they're making a billion mistakes. They should know better than it's setting up all of my entries. And I never even have to touch them. It's just, it's like they're not in their stance. They're reaching with their lead arm. They're reaching with their elbows out. They're, they're panicking when I crowd them. And they're trying to push me away instead of just keeping their head level on the same level as mine and circling off. They don't circle off. They sprawl. They jump their feet in the air and it lets me cut out away from them instead of just going through them. You see what I mean? So there's like, those are all mistakes that every wrestler who learned wrestling correctly should not do. They just are lazy. It's the same way jiu-jitsu people all know what they're supposed to do, but they don't do it. Does that make sense? Okay. So yeah, it comes back to just knowing what you're supposed to do and practicing it. So physically conditioning, he told me to do hill sprints. He said they do that at the Olympics. Um, he said they do, he said 40 rounds. That's a lot of rounds. I don't know if you've ever tried this. I got 10 the first time. I was, I was basically walking by 10, <laughs> I know. It was, it was not good, but it doesn't matter. So the other thing about training effectively is it doesn't matter what everyone else around you is doing because that, that doesn't have any impact whatsoever on your shit, okay? It's just like embarrassment and ego that really makes people not do stuff right, you know? Because they're scared of being tired in class when you're supposed to. If, if, if you pushing your hips in a mount makes you exhausted in class, it doesn't matter. Is then you're, you're physically conditioning them by doing that to do it more effectively. In a month, that guy's fucked, okay? But the guy in the tournament is who you're training for. The ideal perfection in the tournament. You're going to run into the god who doesn't really exist because they retired. <laughs> <laughs> but does, does that make sense to everyone? It's just like let go of the ego. It doesn't matter. It generally doesn't matter what happens in the room. If I, like, if I got tapped out by every single person in this room today because I tried to do something brand new, a new system or something, I'm still going to go fuck everyone up in the world. It just did, it, it did it matter at all. It's only going to matter as much as I think it matters, and I don't think it matters at all. You know what I mean? I did when I was younger, but that slowed down my rate of progress by a lot. I had to learn to let go of it, literally, genuinely. I was like, not egotistical, but I was afraid to lose, even in the room. Okay, so it's something you have to just apply to yourself. And like, ask yourself, why didn't, that, why didn't I hit that move? What's the answer? Oh, I was afraid to go for it, because he's really good. And he's probably going to counter it. How am I going to get better at doing the move? <laughs> you know? it's, just all, it's just about, it, it, it's, it's about ego, but ego is a word where no one associates it with themselves because it's, it's, it's tricky. It's slippery. Okay. Ego makes you think of puffed up macho. 
not the fear and anxiety. That's, that can be lumped under ego a little bit, okay? Fear of failure. And that applies to your training a big time. But he told me they did 40, 40 rounds of sprints at the Olympics with a 30 second break between them. That gives me fear and anxiety. That gives me genuine fear and anxiety. <laughs> I actually do get anxiety thinking about sprints still to this day. I hate cardio so much. I wish that jujitsu was a, a computer <laughs> and that physical conditioning didn't matter because I hate doing conditioning, which should tell you a lot about how important it is. Because I, I have to do it. I, I know I have to do it. I know it's the thing I have to do. So I just tell myself I have to do it. So the way I did it, I did the first uh, 10 rounds with a minute break. Because you have to build up routines too. You don't just jump into perfection in Olympic level training. Like I went out and I did 10 rounds and it, it really genuinely sucked. And I was fucked up. My, my calves hurt. I had shin splints. My whole body hurt somehow. My ears hurt. I did sprints. I don't know. <laughs> it, just, it just happened. And then the, I did it two days later. Okay. And then I was able to do 10 rounds easier. Okay. And then over the next week, I took the break down to 45 seconds and I was sprinting harder already. And then the next week I did 15 rounds, but I did 10 rounds of a minute and then another five rounds or 10 rounds of 45 seconds and another five rounds of a minute. And you see, how I'm just incrementally climbing and adjusting until I'm sprinting at hundred the whole time. And then I'm just adjusting the time frame between them. Okay. And you can always ease off. You know, if your body's fucked up, it's fucked up. You know what I mean? And that's really relevant in terms of injury prevention. And it's really relevant in terms of training and rolling. Okay. This is something that every wrestler that's at a high level will tell you is dumb. But jiu-jitsu doesn't think of itself as a sport, so we're holding ourselves back a lot, okay? You shouldn't roll live if you're fucking exhausted and tired and just brutalized because you're going to train bad habits. You're going to train yourself to not go after that opening, it's okay, I'm tired. You're going to train yourself to not pressure because it's okay, I'm tired. And some people are good at being honest with that anyways and being tired and doing it anyways. But you see how easy that trap is to fall into. And everyone does it. You know, you have to beat, I put it, okay, did you guys ever see the video of me with the shot collar? On? Oh, thank God. No one's seen that. <laughs> so I lost a tournament. Um, I felt like I should have won. I was definitely better than the guy by a lot. But I was not in as good a shape. So that coupled to me not going after as much shit as I should have. And I had been training more complacently. I have to be honest with myself all the time and make sure I am walking the line correctly because it's easy to stray. And I thought to myself, okay, I need to... Push, make myself go in those moments that I'm supposed to be going. So I went to Lowe's and they didn't have it. So I went to a, like a cattle farm store. And first we looked at the prod and I got a little scared. Okay. <laughs> and then we found a shot collar for like wolves. Okay. And Bird went, yes. <laughs> and I went, uh. But we took it home and we went back to the gym and we filed it. And I put it on my ankle and I gave him the remote. You can believe I shocked the shit out of him. So the whole point was he was supposed to beep at me first. If I'm, I'm supposed to be doing something, attack, and I'm not, beep. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, th this is not a good method, by the way. There's downsides. I'll explain those. But I just, I wanted to win. And I wanted to, that's me, this is me problem solving in a weird way. Um, but, but it did work for what I wanted, but there were side effects. Uh, and then if I didn't do it after a beep, you know, like gave me like a second and mm, fucking got me. And it's Bird. And his partner. I've been his brother for a long time, and uh, he's going to keep me honest. <laughs> okay? So, and that worked. And it made me fucking switch to the, oh, God, and fucking attack. And then the next tournament, I just fucking, like, hurt people almost. Not really, but it was like, that's how aggressive I was. Okay? And you see how those tie in? Now, the problem was it gave me a lot of anxiety to think about training. <laughs> and this is also why you don't use negative reinforce or positive punishment is what it's actually called, to teach a dog by the way, because you may break the behavior, but there are going to be side effects and consequences like that. It's just not easy to see in a dog and link the two together. And now we're talking about dog training and jujitsu. So back to drilling. Did that answer your, that was off that question about uh, conditioning, correct? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so drilling. Some, so fine timing windows. Okay. We have down now. Pressure we add. Okay. Pressure in terms of, there's burst pressure and consistent pressure. There's, you know, your big movements to move him and do something, and then your isometric squeeze, which is going to be, actually, it's more important nogi by a lot, okay? Because nogi, we only have those attachment points, so we have to be able to squeeze them when we get them. So now, let's take another position, and how do we drill it? Sit up. This is reflex drilling. Okay? Everyone wonders why 
I can catch an underhook upside down in one second. And I hear this all the time, and at, even at my gym, they tell me this all the time as an excuse to not do what I do in the gym. My teammates don't pass like I do. They don't do anything I do, really. They think they're doing the knee slides, but they're spamming it from a mile out, and we're fixing it. But this is, this is a, I've heard this for years, even from them. I can't do what you do. I can't catch the underhook that fast. I can't kick my leg up like that. They're not stretching. Okay, they're not drilling the right ways. And they're not doing reflex drills to make up for their lack of genetic superiority. Some people are just fast. Little Jacob Borneman is one of the fastest humans I've ever trained with. He has done, he works out, he does a lot for it, but he's always been this fast. You know what I mean? So it's, but reflexes are something you can train and people just don't think about that. So I took the problem where I missed an underhook in a tournament, okay? And I didn't like that, so I wanted to fix it. So I thought about how do I prime these reflexes? And I was like, well, you, you, you can me mechanically drill a lot of reps, but that doesn't give you the same priming of their catching. That is a sudden appearance catch. See what is different? The mechanics and the windows of seeing it do come from reps, but these all tie together. You drill in a lot of ways, but some get more benefit from certain types of drilling than others. So if I want underhooks, okay, what I did is I took Bird. It's always Bird. No one else likes to drill with me, and I have no idea why. Okay. <laughs> they have so a choice. I got in my stance, okay, and I got in front of someone, and I did this drill from different positions where I needed to see underhooks and catch them instantly. Okay. Here, keep your elbows closed. Sit up. Okay. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate the speed that you start, and then we're going to move up. Okay. And he's not trying to win ever. Okay. This is being a good partner. This drill is for me to get better at something, and that's why it's important to know why and what we're drilling. Not just what, but why. What do I need from him here? Okay. Some drills he gets to work on shit too, but not this one. All right. So here, you're just going to randomly pick an elbow and open it. No, no, open it like this. No, no, hands down. I need you to make it obvious. This is for reflexes. Just look, look at me. Okay. And now I couple the drill with a pressure because getting the underhook doesn't matter if you don't keep it. So I, I, I reach out and I squeeze it into my shoulder. One, two, three, 100% pressure. Okay, because that's what I would need against, da I needed against Dante. Actually, training with Dante made me realize I wasn't doing stuff right in a lot of places I could still improve because I wasn't hitting that world champion level of resistance in places. And then when I was, it was not working as well. And I had to troubleshoot why. Okay, so keep your head up here. And I'm not going to squeeze, I'm just demonstrating. And now you can juke me by doing the same, random, not closing it, although nice fucking try, okay, <laughs> but that's what I mean, that was fast, right, and he tried to get me, but no, it's not, we're not, he's not trying to win, guys, that's not effective partner, you see what I mean, because that didn't help me get the reflex right, he just needs to, and you can get to that point where it's like, but like, that's not catchable, it's literally not catchable, you know what I mean, so, that's what you're trying to get from the drill. You start to pick your speed up. And if you were fucking your underhooks up mechanically, you would need reps to fix the mechanics. This is to prime your reflexes. Okay. This applies everywhere. It's not just underhooks. Okay. So I have another drill that I did that helped me for a long time when I used to think passing around the outside was optimal. For Nogi, it's not. I, don't, I really don't think it is. So I would step in towards reverse de la Hiva. Step in the middle of the thigh, and every single motherfucker wants to hook this. But when he goes to hook it, he opens his hip. So I would step in, he'd go to hook, and I would back step, right? That's a very small window, right? So I would need to step in and then have him randomly go to hook it. And then you can apply it to everything. It's just learning how to improve correctly. Now, other positions and other type of resistance and drilling you need. Headquarters is my favorite example of a position you can drill the fuck out of and have zero ability to do it whatsoever, okay? Because like I showed you guys earlier, it's a pressure position. And how do you get more pressure? You pressure people, okay? That's not reps, right? Reps are going to be the mechanics involved. Something from headquarters you need to rep the fuck out of because it's very difficult 
mechanically is the front pummel. When I first started doing it, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like I didn't understand how everyone was doing it. For, I was making mechanical mistakes still, but it's just that complicated of a motion. You do need reps there. You do need required flexibility. So, you know, you can do that for reps all day. Now, do that when he's trying to resist you. Do that while you're pressuring him. See what I mean? So that, this type of position, you get really a lot of benefit from, from active positional drilling. Kind of like sparring, but not sparring. Sparring, he's trying to win, okay? Drilling, he's trying to help me get better, right? And that involves increasing your level of resistance, okay? So what that means is here, I'm pushing into him and doing everything I'm supposed to be doing, and he's just giving me 30% back, pushing me away a little, try to lift me a little. Now I'm learning how to hold the position against pressure and movement. He tries to push me away. The answer is to underhook anyone that pushes you because it's no gi and they can't stop you from underhooking them if they're touching you. In the gi, this position doesn't work as well because they grab your collar. You can't underhook them as well. They can just push you away for free. So I use it for leg weaves in the gi, not for my whole system. But you see how already we have active focus being split everywhere while pressuring by default. That is how you get really good, okay? But you build up to that. You can't just go live until I've done some reflex training, until I've done some uh, you know, reps, until I've done some pressure-based training, okay? It's part of that can come from your live, but it, I can't. If he just can push me away every time in five seconds, you know? What I need is to squeeze him. What I need is to get in these positions, okay? I'm gonna put a little pressure now, all right, here. Knees pinched in, I'm hooked under his, his, his fucking calf. I'm pinching the other side, I'm driving in, I'm low, and I'm, I'm doing this. And I am just genuinely trying to put some pressure down on him, okay? And the way the system works, if I could do this, I could pass him no matter what. If I got to this position, he's, he's already passed, okay? Um, I can go through this way. I can go over the top and catch guillotine, underhook, Kimura. Um, I, can, I can dig for these underhooks from here at any point. If he doesn't give me underhooks because he's good at defending them, he can't stop me from leg pummeling him. Nothing he does matters if I pressure correctly. And then all the things that I do from pressure that he does, once he to push me away, underhook, push me with his knee, it collapses now. Okay? Or you let it go to the outside. You get in, you pass. Or he pushes it too far away, and I roll over the top and collapse it. Or, or, or. See what I mean? And that's how you also build systems. What reactions are they doing? How do I counter it? Can they counter that? How do I counter that? But that's drilling. But really, you see when I say drilling, I'm bl I blanketed all of that under drilling. But really, it's jujitsu self-improvement. It's improving its skills. Okay? So you can take the methodology from other sports that are science-based, like football, StarCraft, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Places where they've gotten hyper good and how do they get good at it? How do they actually get good at it? Not, they're genetically awesome. What do they actually do to improve? And then, apply the concept to self-improvement in other places. Bye, have a great time. All right, guys, if you've ever wondered how do I manage to pull off some of the ridiculous bullshit that I do, go ahead and check out our instructionals on bgjfanatics.com. We don't hold any information back when we make an instructional. It's everything we actually do. We cover everything from gi and no gi buzzsaw, how to wrestle your way up to victory, how to assert dominance from back control, even to what sweet nothings you should whisper while you're on their back. And don't forget we have what's probably the most successful knee slice system in the world just sitting up there for free, so you should absolutely go check that out. We also have a Patreon account called Wilty Brothers BJJ, where you can help me and Bird as we try to take over the world with our non-toxicity, all right? We currently have five tiers on offer, and those tiers offer things from uh, early access to videos, to rolling commentaries of your own, to perks in the Discord channel if you guys want to jump in. We have like 700 people in there right now. Absolutely should check it out if you just want to get more involved with me and Bird. And don't forget to check out our Instagram at AndrewWilty46 for some of those sweet, not quite YouTube friendly content. Currently I'm at about 42,000 subscribers and I think Gordon Ryan has 400,000. So uh, yeah, let's get to work on that. And lastly, don't forget to check out our affiliate channel, Pedago Submission Fighting. They offer some fucking seriously good, high quality production content, almost like the Daisy Fresh documentary you watched on Flow Grappling, okay? Professional editing, lots of heart and soul put into this. If you guys aren't watching that channel already, what the fuck are you doing with your lives? And guys, like always, don't forget to eat your fucking Panda Express.